Hello and welcome to Bird Chat. I'm your host, David Nash. Today we're going to be talking about the migratory patterns of predatory birds in the North Americas. We'll be discussing duck mating habits. And we will be discussing turkey hunting with our new guest, Dr. Louis DeSoto. I, as you can probably tell, I'm very excited to have him on the show. Dr. DeSoto, how are you? Hi, David. It, it's Luis, actually, not Luis. Um, I'm very, very honored to be here on the show. And I know what everybody wants to hear right now. And what, what many hunters are wondering are, is it okay to shoot hens? When I say hen... I'm not talking about. I'm not talking about a chicken hen. You know, I'm not talking about an adult. Sure, you're uh, talking about the turkey. No, I'm you're talking, talking about, about turkey. the turkey. Yeah. And if many of you maybe didn't know this, but young hens are called yens. Is that? I right? didn't know that. I had no idea about that. I had never been exposed to a yen. You know, in in Spanish, it's very different. And and when you learn about birds about birds in English, it's like a whole new world. You know, even somebody with a lot of experience like me, uh, I find myself learning all the time. So this will be a learning experience for everybody. And let me ask you, you've had some hunting experience? Certainly, certainly. My father it's... used and I used to go up to the Schuylkill Mountains and we would hunt turkey, we would hunt wild game, occasionally we would hunt deer, although I never caught it, I never did get a deer. I, I consider that a, an unfortunate sadness in my life that my father passed before I could successfully get a deer, and I just couldn't bring myself to hunt that particular game again. But you had a question I, for me. I would personally say, first let me, let me tell you, I would personally say that you are a bigger man for not having killed a deer. Let me congratulate you on that. And I prefer well, to stick to birds, really. Yeah. Birds, birds all the way. There's a reason that I, I specialize in this. There's a reason that we're here tonight. And the question I have for you as a hunter, is it okay to shoot hens? Well, you know, that's something that a lot of people are divided on. I think that a hen needs to be there as a population control sort of thing. And I believe that shooting hens is... It's just bad for the overall population of the animal, and, and animal control works better when you're dealing with roosters. We have to keep in mind the laws of man here, as well as our own morality. And there are states where it's legal to shoot hens, but in, in a state where it's legal to shoot hens, would I shoot a hen? There are, there are many confusions, especially because of bearded hens. Hmm, interesting. Bearded hens. Bearded hens are fair game in spring and fall seasons, and I can't figure out why. What what makes a turkey different? What makes a hen different? Because they have a beard or not? I don't know. Maybe it had something to do with the flavor of the meat. How many roads must a turkey walk down? How many roads must a chicken cross before you can call him a beard? It's it's a uh, that's a profound question. A question without an answer. You know, no. Bob Dylan sang about that. They need a uh, singer-songwriter for birds. I agree. It's, the times are changing, and pretty soon we will see bird media. I'm sure made by birds for birds. Yeah, it's, yeah. Well, it's almost a beard epidemic. Need. It's a beard epidemic is what a it really beard is. Epidemic. Yeah. A beard epidemic. Yeah. Yes. You know... Uh, but we're getting off track here. I think we were talking about turkeys. Maybe, maybe your father would have. Um, maybe your father did did introduce you to to hen hunting in this tradition. I don't know. No, we never shot hens. We only ever shot male turkeys. Nice. It must be a nice memory. The first male turkey you shot. I don't know. Yes. Heard, oh yes. I'm I'm glad. Wait, was the turkey in full strut? Yes. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, uh, <sighs> I'm okay. I'm okay. Dave, Dave, the turkey was sitting down. 
it was sleeping. I'm sure. Oh, yeah. I'm sure it was a peaceful. It was a peaceful death. He's 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 gone on yes. to the to the endless cycle of of reincarnation of the samsara now. But not an honorable death, I'm afraid. You have nothing to feel bad about. He's in the. He is in the. He's probably. He's in, one of your children he's, right in, now. he's in the wild flock now. Uh, you wanted to, to bring up ducks, right? I wanted to hear about ducks. Sure, we can do that after the break. Everyone, this show is brought to you by Storytime with Tom and Mike. We're going to take a short aside to play an entire episode and then we'll be back. Hello and welcome to Storytime with Tom and Mike. I'm Tom. And that makes me Mike. So I have had my Oculus for a week now. And I wanted to report in. When you get an Oculus, it can be quite innocuous. How much porn you end up watching. Because you don't realize the hours you spent with pussy in your eyes. Or a shot of some guy's butt crack from underneath. <laughs> getting sweat dripped down on your face <laughs> and your teeth. <laughs> 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 I don't even know if I used innocuous correctly. It just fell right. I, I, it was great. I was like, what are you going to rhyme with Oculus? And you said innocu innocuous. Oh, that's great. Um, so, yeah, to answer the question about the porn, not that much. Um, it is not what people make it out to be. Most of it's kind of fucking pixelated and, and clunky. And like it's out of focus sometimes. Mm. And and it's like I don't know how to describe it. The scaling is off. So it's like if you want to look down, you have to really crane your neck to look down. And um uh like their heads are tiny compared yes. to yours. That's really weird. I actually had that problem with you know, like the cheap. 3d viewer thing that you could do yeah that you put when your i phone tried in. watching it yeah when i tried watching it with that i noticed that too like the um they're distorted yeah severely distorted it's sometimes. severely distorted yeah it, this is a technology that it needs a little more work first you don't of mind all jerking off the circus freaks it's not too bad you well, know and here's the other thing it's all like professionally slickly produced and oh, every yeah. girl is the same. And, you know, it's kind of like, that's not the kind of porn that I like. So it's like, I don't really like it that much more in 3D. It's a, it's a novelty. <laughs> it's like, a, I didn't change my mind about this now that I yeah, saw it. In yeah, 3D. It's, a, it's a novelty. It's, it's not what everyone thinks it is. It's not what everyone say. It, it, it's amazing. I, I honestly think people who are saying that, are either such hardcore porn addicts that they would say that about anything new because their their dopamine receptors are fried out from normal porn and they have to, you know, go to extremes to find ways to get off. But I, I also think that um, people are just saying, well, you know, I spent all this money on Oculus and, you know, I'm not going to lie to myself. I bought it specifically for porn and I'm going to tell myself it's great because I want to justify my 300 to 400 dollar purchase depending mm -hmm. on what model you get you know people do that all the time they they justify why they spent that money for me my justification is honestly the boxing program on supernatural uh which is like a fitness app and they have like flow exercises which i haven't checked out yet and there's boxing exercises and they kick my ass like the one day I, my legs were rubbery afterwards <laughs> isn't that isn't that fun when you do something like that and you're like oh when you're doing it you're like it's this isn't too bad yeah and then it at kicks first your ass. and then all of a sudden yes it throttles you and you go to move and you're like oh it's like it's like drinking and going to stand up yeah <laughs> yeah you're, you're wholeheartedly surprised by what you get <laughs> but i have i have like a slew of games that i bought in in a uh manic haze uh, after buying the Oculus all on Steam. And you, first of all, any game that you play on Oculus that you use the link 
to your PC for, your mm-hmm. PC does like double time to render it. So my fan is like, you know what I mean? Blowing on my computer. Yeah, it's like a you little B-52 inside of your uh, inside your case. It's not nearly as, as loud as it can get, because when I before I got it configured correctly, every time it would play a game, it would blast at full speed and it sound like a fucking jet engine. It was insane. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so, you know, it does take up a little bit more computational power. Um, nothing that my PC isn't apparently able to handle, but still, you know, like you can hear it chugging away. Mm hmm. And uh, that always makes me a little nervous because I've had PCs burn out and brick on, on you know, when there there's too much intensity on the chip, you know, because the chip is still getting hot. But anyway, uh, so the games I've played, let's see, I've played Elite Dangerous, which is a spaceship type of game. Uh, it's okay. I, I haven't gotten past the tutorial because I keep running into shit. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I've got Gorn, which is a very silly sort of, uh, fighter game, uh, with really Gorn, the name of the one detective on law and order. Hmm. I just, I just imagine the game where you just, where you just play him and you're like (laughs) (laughs) walking around solving some crimes uh let's see so gorn gorn is like a arena combat uh i got a game called narcosis which i have not played yet because it's supposed to be scary and i'm kind of chicken shit about it um i got shadow legend vr which isn't really all that good uh, <laughs> um shadow unlegend it's i will say this it's it's ambitious it's just clunky you know, the graphics look like something you would see in an arcade, like in the year, like 1999, <laughs> you know, just in the year 2000. I, I got Subnautica a while back, which is like a deep sea diving adventure type game. And uh, that's pretty immersive. I'll have, I have to say that's pretty cool when you're just looking around, there's water surrounding you in every direction. You know, and the room is lit by the sun overhead. It's just, it's cool. Um, yeah, it sounds it. The Walking Dead Saints and Sinners is pretty badass. Uh, it's it's a workout. Like you chop it, you go through the tutorial and like you stab a zombie in the head. And then to get it out, you really have to do this. Like you really have to move and, and keep trying. And, and it forces you to kind of like, tighten your muscles and shit so it's like you're really trying to do the activity you're doing in in life like it takes some effort so you know removing the knife from a zombie's head is you know a difficult task and like it really works you out but it's a lot of fun uh and then i got trover saves the universe um which is uh the game by justin roiland that I showed you a little bit. Yeah, I remember back. that. Yeah, it was a long time ago. It's a funny fucking game. Um, I don't exactly know why it's in a virtual 3D space. It doesn't really lend itself in any way to that. <laughs> it's like they it just, just just because they could. It, but they did a good job with it. It is immersive. It's just not necessary uh, at all. But uh, it's all controller based, so you don't have to fuck around with the 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 hand things uh, too much. Uh, just to get it started and shit. And then you just take over with the controller. Uh, and then I got a couple games directly on the Oculus. I got a game called The Room, which Jennifer loves. It's like a say hidden, The Room. Yeah, it's like a hidden object game. It's really uh-huh. immersive. It's very, very well made. I like nice. it too. Nice. So I, rec- I recommend that to everyone who has an Oculus. If you like, you know, solving puzzles or just getting taken into a really atmospheric place i was wondering when you said the room if it was going to be like an escape game i think that would be okay it's like an escape well it's not an escape room it's it's more like a puzzle room like you open up a drawer and you find a key and that unlocks something and then you you put a a reel of um uh video on on a 
reel to reel projector and play it. And then it gives you the safe combination. Then you put the safe combination. It sounds you get a the- lot like, like, like the escape games that you would get on, uh, on like addicting games or one of those things yep. there. Yeah. yeah. So it sounds yeah. just like that. That's cool. And now see that that's something I could dig. I love playing those. Well, next time you come over or maybe I can even bring it to, to your place. You can check it out. It's, it's very fun. Um, Make sure I I clear out a wide space for us. Yeah. We need a wide berth. Well, for this game, you can do it sitting. You don't have to walk around. Um, So that's, that's useful. Um, That's, I mean, you know, the only thing you're going to bump into is the stuff directly in front of you. So as long as you just have like, like a good two feet in front of you, you're good. Okay. Um, Beat Saber, which I suck at. Uh, (laughs) Everyone knows what Beat Saber is. And then uh, I like the app Supernatural, which is a pay by month uh, service. It's like a fitness game and it has like training on how to box and stuff. And I mean, it's not going to teach me how to defend myself, but it's good exercise. It gets me my heart rate going and, and all that good shit. So, yeah, so far, my experience has been positive. Uh, I kind of want to wait. I don't want to use it a whole lot because I'm afraid that my glasses are going to scratch up the lenses and vice versa. Yeah, I remember you. I remember you saying that you were having an issue there. Yeah, that you I got a potential. Yeah, oh, I got a scratch on my lens, and I don't know where it came from. So I assume it was when I was doing my boxing. You know, I was my head's moving around a lot, and probably I moved my head too much. And you yeah, bobbed when you should have waved. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And and I ended up ended up, you know, maybe giving my, myself a scratch on the lens. It could have been something else, but I don't it seems like mm, that seems like the most likely culprit. So uh you can buy if you I, I'm getting my eyes checked next month and I'm gonna get my prescription. And when I have my prescription, you can order lenses that are custom made. Um, Mm -hmm. with your exact prescription and like blue light protection and anti-scratch and all that shit for like 60 bucks. And they just pop right into the Oculus with a little like a magnetic click thing. Nice. And and yeah, and you can take them out and put them in your little case and boom, they're safe. Yeah. I thought you were going to say like you were going to get contacts and I thought, would you be able to close your eyes with contacts in your eyes? (laughs) When you got a big prescription, you're like, oh, I can't close my eyes. Yeah, they're they're like, because I'm an asshole. Yeah. (laughs) Well, it's like half a marble (laughs) just sitting on top of my eye. Yeah, I no, I can't wear contacts. I've tried. Oh, I I couldn't wear contacts if you paid me to because the thought of touching my eyeball couldn't do it and doing can't can't do it. Can't do it. No, it grosses me out. And I know it's my eyeball, but hey, I've made it 44 years without having to put my finger in my fucking eye to put something on there. Right. I think I'm going to keep it that way. Yeah. Yeah. It's better off not. I, I, you know what I mean? Like if it's, if it's just a matter of convenience, like nine times out of 10 glasses are can not so inconvenient compared to sticking something in your eye that could get infected or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, glasses are a pain in the ass. You have to take them off on a roller coaster, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But for all the downsides, at least I don't have to worry about if I don't wash them or take them out in a timely manner, my eyes might just stop working. <laughs> it's, it'll you know. get stuck in there and then uh, no. reminds me of there was this show on USA back in the 90s called Duckman. Yeah, remember I remember it? Duckman yep. by Jason Alexander. Mm-hmm. And he had this son who was this big oafish nimrod um and they for some reason got trapped in the basement (laughs) and the fucking big stupid duck is like hey look i found my contact (laughs) and he picks it up off the basement floor (laughs) (laughs) and he puts it in his eye and it does like this and this was well before family guy but it does this family guy shift to a scene of like this beautiful like oceanic like terrain like this beautiful like like forest you know Mm -hmm. 
you know, kind of environment. <laughs> and then this wave of fucking dust comes in and it just turns into an arid wasteland. <laughs> and then it cuts back out and his eye is red and pulsing. <laughs> I swear I remember that episode. Oh, it's so goddamn funny. <laughs> what a funny show. My favorite pop-up family guy goofy thing is the one where Stewie's trying to fart at the table and he breaks a blood vessel in his eye. <laughs> he goes, oh, I broke a blood vessel and his fucking eye just turns completely red. Dude, that is hilarious. Just out of nowhere. I, re- I remember watching eye humor. <laughs> I remember watching um, Family Guy back right around the time that Comedy Central picked it up, I guess. So like early 2000s. And uh, I was watching an episode and I, I don't particularly care for that show for the same reasons that I don't particularly care for South Park. It's like I can, it has I can a- dig it. It has its place. Sometimes if I'm in the mood for it, I'll watch it. But for yeah. the most part, it's kind of like, eh. eh. If I don't know, seen... especially like the earlier episodes of it are insufferable sometimes. Yeah. yeah. The newer episodes I found are a lot more palatable. Well, but the older ones, to me, I'm just like, bro, how many times can you can you riff on uh, one of the Bing Crosby and Bob Hope traveling movies? Like they have road to Massachusetts, road to Cohog, road to here, road to there. They're doing on Family Guy. And I'm like, all right, look, we get that you dig old time humor. Yeah, but well, it doesn't it doesn't translate well here. No. And and it's just I don't know. Sometimes I feel like it's just shock value to be shock value. And I mm-hmm. don't care for that. And I just I don't think Seth Seth. Uh, whatever his name is, Mc, 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 McFarlane. McFarlane. I don't think he's that funny. He I can just, be. He can be. He can yes. be real funny. And With, then he's got other times where it just feels like it's kind of forced. And I think that, you know, I'm sure all of his uh, his fucking Emmy Awards and or whatever that he has won will will uh, will, will translate well in his arguments. Well, from two guys for two guys who don't know shit about television well I, what i mean <laughs> when i say i don't think he's funny i guess i should modify that because i've seen him do public speaking and he can be very funny and very charming and i think he's i'm sure he's a great dude you know what i mean like all mm-hmm. that but it's more about the fact that like he's stuffed in a writer's room with all these other people and he's forced to put out an episode a week and the shit has run its course. It's like the Simpsons. It's done. Let it fucking die. Just let it fucking die. Let something else take its place. That's how you get. I mean, that's what the Simpsons was. It was something no one had done before. That's why it was such a a phenomenon back in the eighties. And now it's like, When's the last time you've seen someone wearing a fucking Simpsons t-shirt? Uh, truthfully, uh, probably when I went to Florida and I uh, was at the amusement park where they have the um like the like the the donut or the the Quickie Mart and everything there. It's probably the last time I've even seen a Simpsons t-shirt. Right. And that was like 2008. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's played out, you know, I just I don't know, because I'm always and I am and always have been like a fan of like cutting edge or avant garde animation and, Mm -hmm. you know, stuff like that, which is why I love Adult Swim. Yeah. And uh, what I found, by the way, to my great uh, uh, pleasure is that. HBO Max carries a lot of Adult Swim series. Yep, yep. Uh, I have HBO Max, and yeah, they 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 literally there's a treasure trove. Oh yes, on there, tons of the best stuff. It's all the best of. You don't get some of the experimental stuff, but there's a lot of great stuff on there. Uh, I I recently watched Smiling Friends. I don't know if you've mm-hmm. watched that. That's really I funny. Have, yeah, yeah, that's really funny. I think that those guys, I hope that they come back for, I think they got renewed already, uh, but I'm not sure. But I follow the one guy, Zach Hadel on Twitter and he's really funny in the let's play scene. Like he's 
on a channel called Oni Plays, which is Chris mm-hmm. O'Neill and Zach Hadel and like a couple other re- really funny, talented voice actors and uh, animators um, who just they just get together and riff on games like like we do, you know, yeah. and it's just it's just a good yeah. time. Yeah, it's a good time. And they're they're raunchy and they're funny and they're inappropriate and it's everything you love, you know, and sometimes Sounds you're like perfect. Yeah. Sometimes you're like, oh, my God, you didn't just fucking say that. But other times you're like, yeah, OK, I would have made that joke, too. <laughs> <laughs> um, they have one j- ongoing joke that Chrissy, Chris O'Neill um, uh, does where, where he talks about throwing boiling milk on people (laughs) that sounds terrible yeah but why boiling milk you know it's so specific i imagine it i don't know (laughs) it's not any worse than water it's not like it's gonna stick to you it's just that it's milk so it's it's gonna smell a lot worse it's gonna smell really bad it's just gonna be fucking unpleasant You know, (laughs) like on top of first, second, maybe even third degree burns, you're going to get milk stink in your clothes, your hair, your your facial hair, if you have facial hair everywhere. And it's going to coat and stick in there. And it's going to it's going to fuse with your skin. Uh, That sounds pretty terrible. If you like story time with Tom and Mike or our Let's Play channel, Gaming with Tom and Mike, please consider contributing to our Patreon. For only $1 a month, you'll receive access to bonus content such as lost segments from the podcast, unaired gaming videos, behind the scenes audio and video, sketches, and more. Just go to www.patreon.com slash Tom and Mike. Thanks for listening and enjoy the rest of the show. Dentist found guilty of damaging patients' teeth to boost profits. And here it says that this dentist in Wisconsin routinely drilled or broke his client's teeth on purpose so that he could make money putting in extra fillings and and doing caps and all that kind of stuff. And you don't need to read through this whole story to know what kind of a piece of trash it takes to do something like that. Mm -hmm. But he made... He billed more than from 2016 to 2019 more than 4.2 million dollars for crowns, performing more crowns than 95 percent of dentists in Wisconsin during that time. That's a lot of dentists. Yeah, I'm positive that's a lot of dentists. I think people in Wisconsin have good teeth because they got they got the cheese and the milk and they got the good dental health because of the uh, calcium. So. This reminds me, there was a dentist when I was a kid that my brother and I went to that we found out or figured out after a certain point in time, because he was one of those guys like you'd go into the office and he would always be like, oh, the parents don't need to come back. It's fine. I've got everything handled, mm, which that's a, sketchy. Lot of, a lot of dentists now are like that because they're like, oh, you'll get your child all riled up and everything. But this is like the, uh, you know, the 80s. And uh, I don't remember ever hearing that as an excuse, maybe because the exam room was too small. I don't fucking know. But dude used to drill into our teeth without using Novocaine. He'd be like, Oh, you want to try without Novocaine or you can be a tough guy. You don't, you don't need to have Novocaine and stuff and would drill into our teeth and put fillings in when I don't even know that we had cavities. I'd be fairly certain that for as on it as our parents were about making sure that we're brushing our teeth, that I probably didn't have as many as, as this guy was acting like uh, I did. And later on, he ended up getting shut down, if I'm not mistaken, for doing just that. Mm-hmm. And fucking like dent- practice. Dental pain is one of the fucking worst pains. Everybody knows that. Like you get an abscess or something like that. Oh, my God. You're like, yeah. please shoot me. Please shoot me. Well, later on, I had another dentist and he actually asked me the one time and it was interesting to me because I had an abscess that was really bad. He said, look, I can shoot you up with Novocaine and we can wait for this stuff to take effect. You look like you are in a massive amount of pain right now. How about I just try drilling down into the tooth without it? And if it gets to be too much, I'll stop. And I was like, I don't 
think I want to do that, but this hurts so bad right now that I will literally do anything to relieve this pressure. Mm -hmm. And I think that it was my previous training that, that led me to that day to being able to handle it. Cause he, he drilled down into the tooth and I was like, fuck it, keep going, keep going, keep going. And as soon as he hit that pressure and it released, Oh, it was almost better than sex. Yeah. Yeah. It was amazing. Yeah. I imagine, I imagine there's, yeah. I remember how I had like a thing on my back once it was like this really, really nasty boil right on the base of my spine. Oh, and, and it was like, I could barely walk. It was so painful. And I that remember my it. wife, my wife, uh, like I had this, draw- my wife, <laughs> my wife. Uh, I had this like drawing salve, like that black drawing salve, really mm-hmm. nasty stuff that works wonders. And I put that on there for like three days and then my wife helped me pop it. And it was Ugh. like, it was like, it was I like didn't get every to see orgasm it you ever had, though, when that pressure released. Total and immediate relief. Like, oh. Yeah. Total and immediate relief. Like, I imagine it's what in a D&D or video games, like drinking a health potion feels like. It's like the oh, sudden yeah. just wash of relief comes over you is that pain instantly alleviates i'm sure the site itself was probably very grim oh i'm sure i'm sure i'm sure that much well, like in my situation way. too because i know that i shot out like a geyser of bloody oh yeah Posse. stuff out of my tooth and it smelled like it smelled oh. like a, a dumpster from hell <laughs> god damn this is a very uh, this is a very tactile story like i can i can yeah. taste it i can smell it i can feel it right now <laughs> I, I can't remember who it was it could have been amber or it could have been uh shell or it could have been layla from these are all guests that we had recently for those mm-hmm. who didn't go back go back to 137 with that with amber and go back to 139 with uh Layla and Shell and and you'll have you'll and you'll enjoy it. But anyway, one of those people told me that what did they tell me? I lost track of what I was saying. Oh, they said that they that oh yeah it was it was Layla who had said if if your storytelling of like um ghost stuff was anything like your gore stories um <laughs> you'd be a worthy guest for for their show as well because um you just have this way with describing the phenomenally disturbing <laughs> oh, i think that's a compliment speaking of phenomenally it disturbing and getting off the track a little bit but oh do take it as a as a compliment i that was meant that way but um I watched this video today because I sent you guys, you and Brandon, that balloon fest. Yeah, that balloon thing. fest. I remember watching that a few years back and just shaking my head. How? how Let's was talk a, about balloon fest. Let's talk yeah, about balloon all right, fest. Yeah. Okay, I, so you got to go on, just go on, on, on YouTube and type in balloon fest. What is it? 1986. I think you might be able to just look up balloon fest disaster and you might be able to find it. Yeah. I'm, there's a specific video. It's about six and a half minutes long, maybe seven like minutes grainy, long. terrible VHS. Grainy, like, yeah. Second or third generation VHS tape. Yes. Been watched a lot of times. It's got the scan lines and the tracking flare fucking shit. <laughs> <laughs> and the color is off and yeah it's terrible and um like you can tell it was recorded with an old vcr you know like a shitty vcr not one that had like you know, like sony or something that was like you know color correction software built into it and shit yeah yeah so yeah uh well software hardware at that point but anyway so um it opens on cleveland in 1986 and um there are hundreds of children and adults make filling balloons with helium and releasing them to the ceiling where there's this big net that catches them and they're all wearing fucking tape on their fingers because they're they're giving themselves ripping themselves apart to set what they think is a world record. Yeah. 
Yeah, one for the point, for the most balloons ever released in one launch. Yeah, one point five million balloons. Okay, and their thinking is that it like they planned this for six months too, but there was some sort of like high pressure system that came into the area because mm-hmm. <laughs> they had planned for something like ten percent of the balloons to touch down in the water, and then they would go and clean it up. Or maybe not. I don't really know. Um, it it didn't seem like they had a really good plan. I'm, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, they really, for six months of planning, they screwed the pooch hard on this. Um, and then they, they're they like, it keeps getting worse because the next day, all these balloons just float up in the air and they look like a mass of cancerous material just enveloping this building and just spreading. It was a frighteningly large. I was afraid for the helicopter that was taking the video. I kept thinking, oh, my God, those balloons are going to get sucked up into the engine of the helicopter or something like that. Yeah. And then it's going to like, it's going to explode and, you know, mass casualty incident because of fucking balloons. Yeah, the stupidest idea. And my favorite line from the entire video is, we're going to make history today. We're no longer the the mistake on the lake. (laughs) Yeah. Guess what, Cleveland? You still are. (laughs) It didn't end that day. No, it did not. Because the balloons essentially all ended up, most of them at least, in water. Mm -hmm. Something like 80% of them. Yeah, making it a terrible, terrible day for the Coast Guard because the Coast Guard was looking out and seeing, you know, all these balloons, some of them resembling perhaps human heads. And, you know, like if somebody was drowning or what have you, it made it near impossible for them to be able to do their job for water rescues. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you got well, sidetracked for a second there. Yeah, I was. I was wool gathering. Um. No. Yeah. I, uh, there's this one point where the guy is like, "Well, yeah, you know, we're out here, and you're looking for either like a head or uh, an orange vest, and it's really hard to discern that when there's five hundred thousand orange balloons <laughs> <laughs> floating in the water." Yeah. You know? And and so they never found them. They ended up like washing up to shore. Their bodies washed <laughs> up to shore like two days later or whatever. And the, thing, and the other thing was that the woman with the news report is just like they were here, the balloons, and they mysteriously disappeared. And she was like, oh, well, yeah, <laughs> not our, she's not like, our fucking problem anymore. Yeah, she's like, thank, <laughs> thank goodness. Now the wildlife won't be affected anymore. Meanwhile, fuck mm-hmm. Canada, because that's yeah. where they all ended up. Yeah, and we aren't saying fuck Canada. We're saying no, that we're Cleveland, saying... Cleveland that day said fuck Canada. Yeah, 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 exactly. They were like, well, whatever. It's their ecological mini disaster yeah. to deal with as as 80 pounds of fucking latex is just littering the shores of your once pristine lake. Mm. Oh, that's disgusting. It's so bad. There have been so many f- freakish videos having to do with balloons and stuff. Uh, if you look on YouTube, uh, yeah. I know that, that there's at least one with uh, with a balloon fest where it's actually hot air balloons. And this guy's trying to get this balloon up and he's right at a tree and like the fucking balloon gets caught in a tree and he keeps and he's pulling the, the uh, pulling on the burner to make the balloon go up and like the tree catches fire and everything. What? I'm like, oh I'm like, balloons, balloons are bad news, man. Up, up, and away in my terrible, my terrible oh, balloon. balloon. And we probably just maxed uh, out the... Uh... <laughs> yeah, we just redlined it. Redlined it. They call that commie levels. Oh, <laughs> commie levels. Commie levels, <laughs> yeah, because it's all red. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that's so funny. <laughs> it's all red. <laughs> it's like Republicans. Oh my goodness, that was so funny. <laughs> uh, oh my god.
A Georgia mom is on a mission to spread joy and raise awareness after her one year old son was diagnosed with uncombable hair syndrome, a hair disorder that she'd never heard of until last year. So this is on abcnews.com. Uh, dot go dot com. I don't know what the fucking difference is, but um, yeah, it, it's this this little kid whose hair just stands up on end. It's so fine. Looks like he's in a constant state of static. Yeah, yeah. He looks like a dandelion, like the white when the dandelions are white, and it's all just little ready to be blown away. Like that's what he looks like. His head's just his hair's just standing out. And I remember I found this. And he's got quite a, a mass of hair on his head. Yes, too. he does. He's got a big old white poofy fro. Yeah. And I remember, I remember um, like I was on Reddit, which is where I found the story. And um, some guy was like, is it also unshavable? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> it will destroy any razor which tries to go yeah. through it. Soft, soft as a feather and hard as steel. Yeah. Only about a hundred cases have been reported in medical studies, but experts think there's probably more unreported cases, which means they probably have been walking around with a shaved head their whole lives. Well, here's the thing: it's the says, kid's fucking adorable too. FYI. Uncombable hair syndrome is a rare hair disorder and a genetic condition that usually affects children between the ages of three months to three years, although there have been reports of cases in kids up to the age of 12. So, yeah, so eventually it will go away. Like, it's interesting how, like, you change, um, like, both my sister and I, when we were babies, had the blondest hair, like platinum mm -hmm. blonde. and by the time we got to be like teenagers our hair both is like i would say mine's maybe dirty blonde at best in terms of blondness and my sister's is even darker although it's hard to tell because i think she dyes her hair quite frequently i think though even before even before she would have done that when we were still all younger i think her hair was was pretty dark yeah yeah i would say like a nice like chestnut brown yeah, I would say about that color. So, yeah. Um, and like, I also, and this is weird to bring this comparison in, but I look at a Reddit subreddit called From Kitten to Cat, where it shows pictures of, you know, baby cats and then what they look like a year later. Mm -hmm. and it never fails to amaze me how their hair patterns change. From the time oh, they're yeah. babies to the time they're adults, you know, about that window of, I would say, from birth to about six months before they really sort of stabilize, you mm -hmm. know, and then like you see these little pictures and, and it's like these Persian little Siamese or Persian cats, you know, with the very pointed color scheme and, you know, it's all fluffy as a kitten. And then you see the same cat a year later and they're like this elegant, sleek, you know, uh, beautiful cat. Mm hmm. It's just neat. I don't know. It's it's interesting how like your biology says, all right, you're four. It's time to stop producing the, the <laughs> whatever that makes your hair stay blonde. We're going to shift your DNA because you're you're four years old. You're six years old now. This kid better get in on the uh, Albert Einstein and Doc from uh, Back to the Future. Back to the Future. Yeah. You know, uh, Doc Brown. He, he, yeah, he better get all the Doc Brown and Albert Einstein uh, costuming in that he can. Well, yeah. he still got it because he'll be an adorable little lab coat wearing scientist guy. Oh, that's what they need to do with him for Halloween. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they need to have him be like Einstein one year. And then the next year he needs to be like um, the other person you said. Doc Brown. Doc Brown. Yes. Yeah. Um, who else like would have that that look? With his hair as white as it is, he could also be the the albino guy from uh, that Tom Hanks movie. Um, <laughs> fucking the Dan Brown book. What the hell is it called? Angels and Demons? Not that one. The other one. 
uh the one where he's looking for like i can't, I, I know what you're talking about and i cannot think of the fucking name of it yeah um yeah but damn it I can't remember what the fucking name of the movie was, but yeah, it's, it's that one where he's got the scroll and he's running around the Vatican and there's yeah. that monk or that guy who was a monk who his monk, his monastery like explodes or something. And then he escapes unharmed and he beats the shit out of himself regularly with like ropes. He just beats so, himself till he bleeds over his shoulder while yeah, lashing, lashing himself. Yeah. Self-flagellation, I think they call yes, it. Yes, that's it. Self-flagellation. Yeah. It sounds dirty, but it's not. No, instead it's just horrifying. Yeah, it's just terrible. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. And then he, oh, wow. What a weird movie. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> Back on to the young man here. So, yeah. And, you know, he's just fucking the most adorable kid you've ever seen in your life um he looks like a little punk rocker like if you didn't know you'd think that that was like an intentional hairstyle yeah like the parents like spent hours if they on could it. like gel it and like spike it for him and everything you know yeah. pull it all together and give him a nice mohawk yeah well maybe it's yeah. ungel is his hair ungelable too it's it's possible i don't think that it's said but uh, I think these are questions we need to have answered. When they, when you look under the microscope, you can see that instead of having hairs that are cylindrical in shape, a shaft of the hair is actually more of a triangle shape. Within the triangle, there are these little grooves that go up and down the long axis of the hair shaft. So that makes it really uncombable. So you literally can't run a comb through this kid's hair. So maybe shaving isn't an option. With like, an elect, with like an electric razor. Here because we go, Mike. Here we go. This is what I've been waiting for, for fucking years. Is it legal to shave this baby? <laughs> <laughs> the shaven baby question comes up again. It does. <laughs> it is a stupid question, but it's a fucking valid question. Is it legal to shave a baby? And I've never gotten an answer. I'm no legal was, expert. But All I've I think gotten that, is pushback. Yeah. I think with this one here, it's not legal because the kid's so damn cute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He looks a, like if you took him outside on a windy day, his hair would just float away like a bunch of, like so much dandelion fluff. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Revealing, revealing a fresh, bald head that can then sprout new hair. Yeah, or yellow start, flowers. I don't know. And start the cycle <laughs> new. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, it's very, it's just, and and yeah, the, both the boys are very, very blonde and both the parents are very, very dark haired. Again, interesting how like hair changes and shit, like they were probably yeah. blonde as kids because obviously there's some dominant gene that both the kids and they both, it's so weird. Both the boys have blonde with blue eyes. They're little Aryan dreams and <laughs> <laughs> and the parents both appear to have, oh, no, 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 the mother has blue eyes. So they got that from mom. But God knows where they got the blonde hair. The the uh, milkman's not telling either. I'm, I'm, I'm here. I'm an, arm, I'm an armchair uh, geneticist all of a sudden. Well, it's clear that. <laughs> you remember doing that genetic stuff in biology class when we were in like junior high where they'd be like, and here you have a yellow flower in order for the yellow flower and the purple flower to make, you know, blah, 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 you know, and having to map all that stuff out. Yeah. It was crazy. Yeah. I, I remember. I being, still don't understand it. Nope. Still don't. Still don't. Yeah. Well, I didn't really pay very much attention in high school. Here's the problem with high school. You're way, 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 way too preoccupied with what other people think of you and what you want to put your dick into or what you want to put into yeah. your vagina. Or, or or into your dick. Or into your dick, yeah. Or sure. into your butt. I mean, or, you know, or, your or mouth. The, or being asexual and having the pressure of having to deal with that when you have no interest at all. True. So, yeah, there's a whole panoply of problems happening at that age. You're still figuring out who the fuck you are, and they expect you to understand <laughs> genetics, fucking advanced chemistry. Jesus it's fair. Christ, it's not, it's not fair. fair. It's not fair. <laughs> Hell, you'd probably be better teaching it off to preteens. <clears throat> <laughs> just give like high school and middle school just give them like 
like video games to play and like once in a while teach them like some math just so they don't forget but like just let them fuck around i mean let them have a couple of free years before they're forced into the hell that is the workforce and and adulthood and adulthood yeah (laughs) yeah say you know maybe make the games educational but engaging so like they prepare them for real life instead of bullshit you know like make them able to critically think and that'd be nice yeah. right that'd yeah be really nice. I mean, having some adults that can critically think i mean yeah. i'm sure we've all known somebody who uh who was rather good in high school and mm-hmm. couldn't and couldn't work out a real life situation well here's the thing i mean it would be lovely to have your kid in a montessori school but it's expensive as fuck and they have high entry standards. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to have a lot of things in order and you need to have some money in order to make that a reality. I have a friend uh, who the friends who their, their child is in a Montessori school instead of kindergarten. He's only five. That kid is smart as a whip. I'm telling you, dude, um, he's going to be fucking, he's going to be a genius. Well, by the time he's an adult and all thanks to the schooling that he's going to get. And, you know, it, it makes me really sad for that, that and that's not more readily available, that type of education. And they're mm-hmm. stuck with this standardized testing bullshit. Yep. That all it does is teach you how to be a fucking sheep so that you'll drink your goddamn coffee and not complain and sit at your workstation or plunk objects onto other objects all goddamn day. It's awful. <laughs> it's yes. Yeah. The whole thing sucks. <laughs> Work does, shouldn't have to be that way. Work should be an enjoyment or it should, you should be able to find joy in work, whatever it if, is you're doing. If only, if only. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. I don't want to sit here and complain about it. I'm just, you know, it's like, it's frustrating to me that we have set up a system where we're led by the least of us, you know, the least, mm-hmm. and I'm quoting Terrence McKenna here when I'm saying the least compassionate, the least intelligent, the least uh, uh, moral. You know, these people are running the show, and and it doesn't matter what side of the fence you're on; they all suck. They all suck. They're all fucking shit. And 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 you know, we're supposed to be represented by these assholes. Fuck off. Yeah. Right. 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 Fuck off. Yeah. Whatever. Give Equal fucking, representation, my ass. Yeah, give me a fucking break. Why? Why? Yeah, I don't. You know what? Let's go to the next topic. Let's go to the next one. All right. Yeah. This one here. This one here made me chuckle a little bit. California city may declare Chick-fil-A public nuisance. Apparently, if you are in Southern California, in the Santa Barbara area specifically, and you go to Chick-fil-A, you are causing all kinds of traffic jams and uh, other issues just by being there. Being a successful business is a public nuisance in Santa Barbara. <laughs> At that particular <laughs> intersection, apparently so. Yes. Yeah. Now, there is uh, relatively close to us here. There is a Popeye's at an intersection. And I can tell you that this place draws people like you wouldn't believe. Mm -hmm. And it's got to be the same kind of a thing because they block an intersection. They block an entire lane of travel and people are like bumper to bumper trying to get in for a half a mile and everything. I can completely yeah. understand this. And also fuck Chick-fil-A. Yeah. Yeah, really. <laughs> really. And not even necessarily, although totally for, but not even necessarily for the, spe- the specific horribleness of their politics and shit, but, mm-hmm. but just cause their shit sucks. It's not good. One time out of morbid curiosity, I went and got a grilled chicken sandwich. It was the blandest, most tasteless thing I've ever eaten from a fast food restaurant. I I think I've only eaten there once myself, maybe twice uh, years and years ago. I've never paid for food there. This was okay. You know how like if you grill a chicken breast, Mm -hmm. you you coat it with like liquid smoke or some marinade or or some combination thereof, right? And then Mm -hmm. you grill it and it gets those nice dark grill lines and then you eat it and it's delicious and all that, 
right? So theirs, it was like they just took a fucking chicken breast and just grilled it and then just slapped it on a bun. No like, seasonings. No seasonings at all. It was it was like they might as well fucking boiled it. It, it, it was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't even finish it. And that's like for me, not finishing a fast food sandwich, you know how rare that is for me. You not finishing a sandwich. Yeah, me not finishing my, any yeah. meal. Oh, yeah. I'm I'm so sad because okay, I got I went to Redner's and, and that's I, not a bust on you. That is no. a I mean, that was the way we were raised. Yeah. Even if you had to sit at the table for an extra fucking half hour or an hour, you sat there till you finished that shit. Yeah. I got I went to Redner's to pick up groceries today and I brought home some fried chicken. And their fried chicken mm. is really good. Yeah, it is. And I had a couple pieces and then I forgot about it. And then I went to have it about an hour and a half ago, two hours ago. And I realized I had left it sitting out for like six hours. And I'm like, oh. no, fuck that. Going in the trash. Anything close to four hours? Like that's no. After that story. <laughs> oh, God. No. Well, I mean, yeah. Plus years of working in food service. Yeah. yeah. Chicken is one thing. Chicken and fish. Around. Yeah, you don't want to fuck around. I never with fuck around with chicken and fish. Nope. Even beef. I mean, you got a little bit more of a window with that, but even that stuff there, yeah, you don't I don't mess around with uh, with the meats. Invest in a food thermometer. That's it's like a buck 95, $5 absolute maximum. Go to a go to your grocery store, go to the line the 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 uh aisle that has all the kitchen gadgets, you'll find one. You mm-hmm. poke it, you poke it in the meat, you can get a digital one and you can get an analog one. You, you poke it in the meat, it tells you how hot it is. And then you you get an accurate reading and then you're not getting fucking botulism or trichinosis. Let's say this, poke it in the thickest part of the meat and not in a bone. Right. Right. Make sure you're not touching the bone because the bone will give you a false reading. Right. Yeah. There's a knack to it, but you'll figure it out. And, And I have found like, depending on what you're cooking, like with sausage, it's smart to actually turn the sausage and drive the thing down in there like a urethral sounding. Ah, I knew we'd find a way to bring that up again. Oh, we have to bring it up. It's the new Joe Rogan. (laughs) Did you ever? Yeah, (laughs) it's the new Joe Rogan. (laughs) Last, see, we're in must. We must be in season. We must be in season two or three now. Oh, the fucking! I just thought about putting a pointy meat thermometer inside your uh, inside your man sausage. Imagine that's how they had to take your host your 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 temperature at the hospital, <laughs> or right. or even or even in your ass. Either way, like uh, it's just like this fucking spike they got to drive into you with a hammer. Chink, 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 chink. No, his temperature's uh, normal. <laughs> oh, that sucks. That sounds horrible. Kristen Stedden, the member of Santa Barbara City Council, believes the restaurant may have outgrown the location and that problem can't be fixed, according to the Santa Barbara News Press, like they know anything. Chick-fil-A has a good problem here. They are so successful they have outgrown their site. It's possible they were oversized for that site to begin with, Stedden told a council meeting earlier this month, the newspaper reported. Mm -hmm. What a a weird sentence. (laughs) (laughs) I don't like your journalism. Yeah, what a what a strange sentence. But yeah, I I feel like this is sort of like a win for them in a way. Oh yeah. I mean, you know, like oh, we're making money hand over fist. Go ahead and declare me a public nuisance because the outcry from all those people who aren't getting their Chick-fil-A will shut that shit right on down. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because no one no one whines worse than an American who's hungry. Truth. <laughs> I, I just don't think there's anyone who's more hangry than an American. We're 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 like, I I want a burger and I want it now, you know. <laughs> because I don't let's put it this way. Maybe my news input is selective, but I never hear of like someone shooting up a McDonald's in France, (laughs) you know, it's always someone in fucking America, like Georgia or someplace who's like, 
I want breakfast. Well, it's 1101. Fuck you. I'm going to shoot you. You know, drop kicking shit at the counter and yeah. threatening employees and diving over the counter and punching the shit out of a poor fucking 16 yeah. year old kid who's just trying to make his fucking money for college or a car or some <laughs> shit. Gotta love him. Yeah. Oh, my God. Good old America. Yeah. So, yeah. So that's a fun little story about Chick-fil-A. Um, again, fuck Chick-fil-A. Don't mm-hmm. go there. You're supporting fascism when you go there. And and you're you're not really doing yourself. If you're going to go get fast food, you know, just be a whore and go to McDonald's. OK, yeah. just, that, just do it right. Just take it in the ass is what I'm saying. You know, take it all the way up to the hilt because that's what you wanted in the first place. You wanted that greasy, filthy, fucking non meat, non cheese, sugar and everything mm. bread. That's basically cake, you know, um, sounds delicious. It is delicious. Yeah. You regret it immediately afterwards, but for like a few minutes, you're so happy. You'll get you're over like, it. Yeah. You'll get over it. Yeah. You'll shit it out in two days or so. <laughs> yeah. Or two hours. It depends. Devin Arthurs, 18 year old um, uh, former neo Nazi who converted to Islam, is accused of killing two of his roommates because they re- disrespected his new faith. Yeah. And his roommates were also neo-Nazis, although they were still neo-Nazis when he had turned over to, I don't know, I guess uh, the way of, of Allah. I don't know what the hell you call that, the the the, the hajib or something like that. Um, <laughs> that I, I don't know. <laughs> I, there's a term for it. There's a term for it that basically implies the five pillars of islam i'm probably someone who's islamic and listens to this is going to be like dude you're so fucking stupid don't talk about shit you don't know about yeah right (laughs) but i remember a little bit of stuff from reading when i was in high school but basically yeah um this cat decided that the truth of the um the world was through the message of uh of muhammad and that uh he wanted to turn his uh roommates over to the right way of thinking um i lost my topics that was what i was doing there i was trying to find it again (laughs) sorry Arthur stated he'd become angered by the world's anti-Muslim sentiment and that he wanted to bring attention to his cause. Arthur has also stated that before the murder, he'd been privy to neo-Nazi internet chat sites threatening to kill people and that he had developed the thinking that he should take some neo-Nazis with him. From one extreme to another. Yeah. Well, I mean, no one ever becomes a neo-Nazi because they're, they're rational. Like, True. There's nothing rational about that. <laughs> I'm going to make a difference in the world. It's a hundred percent an emotional response to something they're afraid of. So yeah, f- fuck that. I, and, and, and I mean, like, I'm sure that anyone who isn't an extremist in the Muslim faith would look at this story and just feel sadness because they're once again, their religion is being misrepresented to the world. Oh yeah. And and being like shown... that's not already a big enough fucking problem. Right, exactly. Like yeah, I don't agree with everything that's in the Quran. I I own a copy and it's really? I do. Yeah. Um mm-hmm. a really beautiful one. I'll have to show it to you the next time you come over here. Um yeah, it's beautifully illustrated. It's all in in full color and, and, and um, really beautiful flowing script and everything. And it is written in both English and in um, Arabic, Hebrew. Hebrew. I I don't know. Whatever language. Is it it Hebrew? Is it? I I don't know. Again, I don't don't, don't know enough. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know enough to. uh, It's written in two languages. I I got it because I saw this ad online 
um, saying <clears throat> we're giving away this book um, uh, to further people's understanding of uh, uh, Islam and to spread the word of 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 Muhammad. Hmm. <laughs> and this is a this is like a seventy dollar book, dude. They nice. really they I mean it's a nice fucking fat. You could kill a dude with this book easily. <laughs> you know, I don't think that anyone who oh my god, I'm, I'm gonna have a fucking I'm gonna have a fucking jihad called on me for saying that. Yeah. No, Good no. Job. But it is, it's like the size of a goddamn big ass dictionary. And 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 it's beautiful and it has a very revered place on my shelf because I, I don't know, like like I may not agree with religion, but I think that holy texts have a lot of really interesting stuff to say. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think there's a lot of truth in them. If you get past some of the dogmatic stuff, you'll find there's a lot of truth there. Um and I just I don't know a lot of people it makes them very happy so I, I treasure it you know it's one of my favorite pieces of my my book collection. You know when I look at this guy he doesn't scream um, converted to Islam to me. No, he looks more like some kind of cheap third rate fucking Spider Man. Yeah, he looks like Tom Holland if Tom Holland was really butt hurt about his Starbucks order. <laughs> I said Elaje. Fuck you. <laughs> this is this is the way he looked at the end of No Way Home. And yeah. I'm not throwing any spoilers out there for anybody that hasn't seen it yet, but uh he gets upset at the end. And just in time for your weed gummy needs, Mike Tyson cannabis brand. It's making ear-shaped gummies. Obviously, to make fun of the fact that Evander Holyfield uh, got his ear bit by Mike Tyson and cashing in on that and having a little poke of fun at himself for it. Mm -hmm. It's it's funny to see. This is in reference to what became known as the bite fight against Evander Holyfield. But I'm doubting that Holyfield's ear was made of cannabis. No. Yeah. Yeah, it was well, it's even it was, it's even got a it's even got they're called mic bites and it's even got a missing chunk from the ear. Yeah, yeah. I love it. <laughs> Mike Tyson uh uh definitely uh, uh endorses them. He says these ears actually taste good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm guessing the first one that he bit didn't. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah, if I'm going to say anyone has an authority on it, it's it's him. Yeah, he's going to know. <laughs> Fucking crazy. Oh my goodness. I remember when that insanity happened. See, um, now I want this. I want this as dessert at my Snoop Dogs. <laughs> it's, yeah, party. It's Snoop. Oh my god, I forgot all about Snoop Dogs. Yeah. If you hadn't tuned in a couple episodes back, uh, we discovered that Snoop Dogg is making a line of sausages and hot dogs, and the name of the company is Snoop Dogs. Snoop Dogs. So, <laughs> did delightful. you know that, that that Evander Holyfield actually forgave Tyson, and that Tyson pitched this to him? Really, that's that's, that's beautiful, man. I think if you can take and uh, have somebody bite part of your ear off, yeah, and you can forgive them for that eventually. I mean, that's that's a beautiful thing there. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, I was crazy then. <laughs> I'm gonna eat your children. <laughs> I was I was crazy, and I, I'm sorry. I got so excited, and I, I just started thinking about chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Next thing I know, oh no, I didn't mean it like that. No, I did I not that mean it like that. You might all. not have meant it like that, but that's how it sounded. I know. Oh man. <laughs> The optics were bad. No, that was terrible. Someone's going to take <laughs> that and they're going to take it out of context. Yep. Racist podcaster. <laughs> <laughs> You've been canceled, sir. It's just going to be story time with Mike. <laughs> here's, yeah. Here's the worst part about that is I thought, well, you know, I'm doing a Mike Tyson impersonation, so I'm not really doing a race 
impersonation. I'm doing a character. So a p- specific person. So I'm in the clear, you know, and I got overconfident. Yeah. And I screwed it. It happens, man. I know you yeah. didn't mean that like that. Obviously. Of course. Not. Of course like anybody not. who listens to this would know you didn't mean it like that. Yeah. Yeah. Come along now, friend. Come along. Everything will be fine. <laughs> <laughs> so would, well i guess the question is 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 moot for you since you're not a cannabis user i was gonna say would you try these um if i was a cannabis user absolutely they look delicious they do look very tasty they look like they're probably like berry flavored or something yeah like little little fruit snacks mm-hmm. yeah the thing about them is like here's here's the thing you don't want them to be too good Because gummies, you can eat one of those and be on your ass an hour later. But if you ate a handful of those, you'd be basically in like such discomfort psychologically and emotionally that you'd think you were dying. Um, Yeah, you don't want to you don't want to eat that many gummies. Yeah, you you want maybe maybe Mike, you know, for those of us that don't partake of cannabis, how about just a fruit snack? Yeah. Get with the Welsh's people, work yeah. it out, work yeah. it out. Maybe when I bite into it, something gushes out. Ooh, gushers. Maybe as long yeah. as it's not, as long as it isn't earwax flavored. Ew, God, no. It'd be great. <laughs> It'd be <laughs> like, be like, like maybe like grape flavored or berry mm. or like, I'm thinking like Concord grape simply because that's my favorite like fruit flavor. To have Mike Tyson's Mike Tyson's Mike bites ear gushers. Yeah, ear gushers. Ugh. Yeah, you, that's something you, that marketing's got to work yeah, on. Yeah, we got to get marketing involved on that. <laughs> Too sweet because that's not going to work. Ear gushers. That's gross. I'm imagining that uh, to a certain degree, Evander Holyfield probably had like stars in his eyes about the potential for this thing to go viral and sell a shit ton, you know, I'd be like, like, you give me a stake in this. Yeah. Yeah. This is pretty lucrative. This sounds kind of lucrative because people are into novelty shit and I'll, I'll dip in, get my, you know, hundred thousand dollars for, or whatever, and then dip out and this will be a flash in the pan or maybe it won't. And I'll make even more money. Yeah, Yeah. 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 I got it all figured out. Yeah, you do. I got it figured out. I got it figured out with some some good points, some bad points, but it all works out. I'm just a little freaked out. Oh, today I uh, we were driving back home from picking up my eldest. And uh, I saw inside of like this, these two car cattle shoots, like two lane cattle shoots. Uh, they're doing construction fucking everywhere in Pennsylvania mm-hmm. on the roads. As you know, we've started into that season now. And yeah. I saw that somebody had sideswiped a car, which was in the back. And about maybe 20 feet up in front of that was another car. I'm assuming the swiper to the swipe B. Swiper, no and- swiping. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> and um, the young lady who was driving the car had her door open and her leg out on the highway, like fucking standing while she was digging through her glove box. Jesus Christ. I don't know what ended up happening to that because I was like, this is a bad situation and something bad's going to happen. Yeah. I don't, I don't even want to be here for this. Yeah. And then I realized that's going to have to be a story that I'll finish another time because we are out of time. Thanks for listening to story time with Tom and Mike. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we enjoyed giving it to you. Giving it to you like that deep down hunger that I gave you for Welch's fruit snacks. Welch is the flavor of the future.